Thank you to Preserve Gold for being a sponsor of our Newsmax podcast. Thinking about investing in physical gold or silver but not sure who you should trust? The folks at Preserve Gold are the perfect partner and highly rated for all your precious metal needs. Text the word DAILY to 50505 and get up to $10,000 in free gold and silver and to learn more today from Preserve Gold. Well, hello there, everyone. You're listening to the Newsmax Daily Podcast. Today is Friday, May 17th. My name is Kay Smythe, and today is my last day filling in for the ever-fantastic Tony Marino, who's out on vacation this week. And since this is my final show, I wanted to bring you some of the best and my absolute favorite segments from some of Newsmax's most epic shows. And yes, I know I made that sound like it's something special I'm just doing today, but we all know that the Newsmax Daily podcast brings you the best every day, don't we? So let's kick things off today with the Chris Salcedo show, where he hit the upcoming presidential debates. And when I say hit, like, well, you'll hear towards the end. You can't turn on the TV without seeing folks talking about the proposed presidential debate, except ironically, CNN. You see, They are laser focused on giving legitimacy to a trial that hasn't even identified a crime allegedly committed by President Trump. Ironic that CNN, an alleged news organization that hasn't been acquainted with news in over a decade, is one of the outlandish demands from Joe Biden and the Democrats. We would all do well to remember the art of the deal. Some advice from your liberty loving Latino in today's preamble. Do I blame the crooks in the White House and the Democrat Party for pitching such a one sided proposal? No, hey, you had to give it a shot, right? Demand that the persons you are dealing with take a bad deal that advantages only you. In case you missed Prima Donna Joe's list of demands, he wants early debate dates in June and September. A a June debate? That doesn't happen. Perhaps giving plenty of recovery time if Biden flops in debate number one. Next, no live audience. CNN's Chris Wallace celebrating the removing of the people from the presidential selection process, saying a debate without an audience will be, quote, quote, cleaner. Yes, wouldn't want all the unwashed masses mucking up an election, would we, Chris Wallace? Next, no conservatives will be allowed to ask questions, only well-known left-wing biased network moderators. Speaking of the networks, they will have the ability to cut microphones to censor the candidates to make sure nobody strays from the carefully choreographed left-wing script. And nothing says America by prohibiting qualified candidates from having the ability to be heard. RFK Jr. will not be allowed on the stage. As I said yesterday, I think China's dictator had a shorter list. President Trump has said he'd debate anywhere, anytime, any place, but he didn't say anybody. In my opinion, the RNC and the campaign should insist that balance be provided to the first debate, frankly, because I know left wingers lie. Thus, there's no guarantee a second debate will even happen, as Democrats have promised. As mentioned, only left-wing moderators are allowed in this debate, according to Joe Biden's rules. CNN moderators Dana Bash and Jake Tamper are on deck. Here's an example of their loathing, unfairness, and disdain of President Trump. The most important question now is the culpability of the president of the United States and the fact that he went to that rally and called for an incited violence. Folks in the control room, I don't need to see any more of that. He's trying to turn this in. He's trying to turn it into a spectacle, into a campaign ad. That's enough of that. We've seen it already. He did say that any Jewish person who voted for Joe Biden should be ashamed of themselves. He had dinner with Nick Fuentes, who is an avowed anti-Semite. but yes or no, did he did he ask no, President? But yes or no, did he no, ask no, President no, no, to help no him yes win re-election? Or, oh, come on, Jake, come on, come on. That that, that that's a that's a job. What do you mean, come fantasy. on? He did it with Russia and Ukraine. In my opinion, conservatives should be present in that first debate as moderators to ensure that Joe Biden is asked some challenging questions. You know, who of us hasn't absolutely lost it on live television when faced with the injustices of our political system, huh? Up next is Carl Higby's Frontline, where Carl and Senator Ted Cruz dig into another topic that'll probably roll you up into the weekend. <sighs> Joe Biden seems to be trying to hide something. Listen to this. Senator Ted Cruz uh, joins me. Sir, 
this is incredible to me that they would even be, be this blatant about it because this is the administration that said we have nothing to hide. Now, the, the claim of executive privilege is, is laughable. As you rightly noted, executive privilege is designed for conversations between the president and senior aides so that you can have real, frank, and candid deliberations in the White House. And executive privilege is a very important protection of the presidency. That was not what was happening here. If Joe Biden was having a conversation with Merrick Garland about what the administration's policy on X, Y, or Z would be, that could be protected by executive privilege. In this instance, Joe Biden was there effectively as a criminal defendant. He was being investigated for, for whether or not he committed felonies, whether or not he violated the law. By the way, Robert Hurd, the special counsel appointed to investigate that, included, yes, he did violate the law. He committed multiple felonies. He did so knowingly. He did so willingly. He did so repeatedly. But the Biden Department of Justice concluded, Joe Biden, the president of the United States, is too incompetent to stand trial. If we prosecuted him, the jury would conclude he is not capable of being guilty because he's so senile that he cannot form the mens rea. He can't decide intent. Mind you, this guy has the nuclear codes. He can push the button and fire our nukes. But according to the Biden Department of Justice, oh, yeah. he's not competent to stand trial as a criminal defendant. To claim that is executive privilege is lunacy because presumably they are not saying that Robert Hur was acting as Biden's employee, right. taking orders from Biden while he was supposedly investigating Biden for criminal offenses. This is a joke. But you know what? They know the media will roll over because the corporate media are cheerleaders and yeah. partisan propagandists. Oh, 100%, Senator. Um, and this whole thing is going to get played out. And I hope that they, you know, Republicans hold the feet to the fire. But I want to get to something else that is actually uh, some, some of the uh, you're making here. The House on Wednesday passed legislation to move air travel at a time of intense passenger woes and dysfunction into the system. Now, Pete Buttigieg has done absolutely nothing here. So it, it, like, it was time that the Republicans stepped in. The House approved the bill 387 to 26. I wonder who the 26 were. Days after the Senate passed it, 88 to 4. I'm, I'm like, this is a big thing. Explain it, please. Uh, it is, and, and this is a bill that I authored. It's major bipartisan legislation that I wrote. I'm the ranking member, which means the senior Republican on the Senate Committee of Commerce, Science, and Transportation. And this bill focuses on aviation. My number one priority in office is jobs. And aviation is responsible for hundreds of thousands of jobs in Texas. It is critical to our entire economy. And this bill improves aviation safety. It hires many more air traffic controllers, which keeps the flying public a lot safer. It also yeah. will reduce delays. And, and critically, it invests in airports with infrastructure throughout the state of Texas, throughout the country. And I'll tell you one victory that was particularly important to me which is this bill creates five new flights into and out of Reagan National Airport, which means San Antonio, the seventh largest city in America, which today does not have a direct flight into Reagan. In 60 days, San Antonio will finally get a direct flight into and out of Reagan. That is long past due. It yeah. was a big battle in the Senate, but at the end <laughs> of the day, Texas prevailed. And as you noted, at the end of the day, my bill passed yeah. 88 to four. One thing I think we can all take a moment to focus on from Senator Ted Cruz and Carl Higby's conversation is the power of local governments, even at the state level. Like that local level is where stuff really happens that will impact your day to day lives. You know, oh, wait, no, just kidding. Look at inflation. Look at the cost of living crisis. Thanks, federal government. Uh, not. Anyway, I'm grateful that we have people like Ted Cruz up there, you know, fighting on behalf of all of us, really, like even me, and I can't even vote. Anyway, I wanted to end today a little differently. We're going to pivot here, and I want to play a segment from the record with Greta Van Susteren, with House Speaker Mike Johnson, and they'll talk about the life and legacy of Reverend Billy Graham. Before we can have world peace, we must have peace within our heart. And bis wir Weltfrieden haben, müssen wir es Frieden. There's only one road to heaven. You say, but if I believe God, isn't that enough? I want to tell you before you leave Madison Square Garden this night of May 15th, you can find everything that you've been searching for in Christ. 
Jesus Christ is the way. He is the truth. He is the light. He was a mighty man. The Bible tells us that in spite of our sins and rebellion, that God loves us. Reverend Billy Graham was known around the globe, preaching to millions and even providing spiritual counsel to 13 sitting presidents, beginning with President Harry Truman. Today, the evangelist was honored when his statue was unveiled in the United States Capitol. Earlier, I spoke with Billy Graham's son, Reverend Franklin Graham, and the Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson. Both spoke at today's unveiling. Gentlemen, nice to see both of you. Thank you. Thanks for being uh, here. This is the first time we've met, isn't it? Today's the first time we've met, Greta. Yeah. yeah. I've prayed for him. <laughs> He's got a tough job. A very tough job indeed, but it's a, it's a big day here at the U.S. Capitol, um, the unveiling of the sculpture of the Reverend Billy Graham. Um, were you surprised, Mr. Speaker, when uh, Reverend Graham said that his father would feel uncomfortable with the preceding day of the ceremony? I wasn't surprised at all. That was his uh, humble nature. I mean, the, one of the reasons that we revere Reverend Graham so much is because he walked that. He walked humbly with God. He was one of the most influential people of the modern era. I mean, without dispute, it's the, the numbers vary, but I mean, he's clearly was seen and heard by probably billions of people over the course of his ministry. And he walked with kings and he walked with presidents, every president since Harry Truman. And yet he had that humble spirit of a Christ follower. And that, that's why I believe God elevated his platform as he did, because he had the right heart. Reverend, I've heard you say before that, um, that what we saw publicly of your father was what, what you saw privately. Yeah, it, it, it was, Greta. The, um, I think one of John Wayne's sons talking about his father said that John Wayne that the world saw on the silver screen was the same John Wayne we saw at home. And uh, I thought to myself, that's, that, that's the way it is with my father. The Billy Graham that the world saw in the stage, in big stadiums, on television, the same man we saw at home. There wasn't two Billy Grahams, it was the same man. What kind of father was he? Uh, he was fun, he was serious, but he was fun. You know, it's one thing, I've, I've, never, I've never heard my father ever say anything derogatory about anybody. He, he just didn't do that. When people would tell jokes about other people or whatever, he just never joined in. It just, he was just, that's, that, he was serious in those things. But he, he loved family. Um, he, he loved us children. But we didn't disobey him. Uh, we'd regret it <laughs> if we talked back to him. Mr. Speaker, you said today um, at the summer how you, you speak all the time. I mean, that's part of being a speaker as you speak. But today you said you were nervous. I really was. And, and we've even done some other unveiling of statues in Statuary Hall and other things. I, 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 don't, I don't typically get uh, have nerves about speaking, but today I did because it's Billy Graham. And right before we walked in, Greta, they handed me his study Bible with his notes in it. I mean, my hands were shaking. I'm like, this is a priceless uh, uh, artifact here, but it's his Bible. So I, I had a few moments at my desk in the speaker's office and just flipped through to see some of the notes he had written on some of my favorite passages of scripture, just a surreal thing. But I, I tell you what, the, the ceremony, as I'm sure people will see if they didn't watch it live, was just, I thought it was so fitting, you know, for him and the people that spoke, everybody had a heartfelt, uh, you know, just real uh, genuine emotion about what he meant to them and what he meant to our nation. And I, I just thought it was very well done. Thanks for listening to the Newsmax Daily Podcast on Friday, May 17th. My name is Kay Smythe. Tony Marino will be back from vacation next week. So have a great weekend and God bless. News breaks every minute, every day. You need the app, the Newsmax app. Find it free on your smartphone store. Then watch us anytime, anywhere. It's our America. We conquered it. We built it. Great values like honesty and fairness. Great courage. A great nation needs a free press. Newsmax is it. 30 million Americans regularly go to Newsmax when they really need to know. They watch Newsmax TV at home on the free Newsmax app. They go to Newsmax.com. Start today. Newsmax is real news for real people.